Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers again. Um, I was looking through Craigslist and I saw this uh, posting for a free Honda HR215 lawnmower. And uh, he says that the deck was cracked. And so he wanted, I think, $25 or something like that. Oh, wait a minute. Was it free? I forget. It was one of those things. Anyway, I emailed him. I said, I'll come get it. He texted me today and says, hey, I'm right there on the curb. Uh, come get it right now. So I zipped over there and I got it. Here's what it looks like. There it is. Honda HR215. <clears throat> problem is... Well, you know what the problem is. The deck is cracked, but it's cracked at the point. The corner where the wheel goes on. That's a pickle. I'll tell you why it's a pickle. It's because there's so much stress on this area here, right? That it'll be really difficult. Of course, you know, I'm thinking, thinking JB weld, right? And if you look at the white parts, the white parts are the parts where it's uh, cracked, where it broke, right? So it's only that point right there, this area here, that area there vital area on this corner here it's a corner because of the structure you know with physics a corner is a lot more stronger than a non-corner so it's here there and this long part right there so i could jb just put jb weld here there everywhere right there and just plop it on and see what happens right but it probably won't hold because you know it's just so um such a big area I and mean, it's such a um, vital area a lot of pressure goes around there but uh, he says it uh, runs great starts everything let's try that's full throttle I'm gonna lower it to idle right engine starts up great uh, I think the gears for the rear self propulsion is bad because uh, while the self propelled seems to work um, it's um, you can see that it's vibrating on the rear wheels going which means that one or both of those wheels the rear gears are stripped so the self propulsion needs work and of course this uh, wheel needs to be put on to the uh, deck there so I'm going to try some JB Weld. I mean, what could it hurt, right? Give it a try. If not, would I have to fabricate some kind of a metal plate there and screw it on, right, to allow that wheel to go on, you know? Because essentially all you really need is the wheel to be on there somehow, you know? And it'll be kind of interesting to do that. So as you can see, this is the Honda with that stop-go blade thingamajig, where it's uh, always two blades. But it's got a clutch on here and a PTO. So uh, when you press onto the PTO lever, right, pulls a wire, tightens the clutch, 
onto the friction plate spins the uh, blades. A plastic deck. Can you believe that? I've had one of these before. This is called a Honda Harmony 215 SX. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this would work. But you know what? I mean, I could just try, right? So, to make it easier for me to put on there, I'm going to remove this wheel so that I don't have to carry all that weight on that corner there. Of course, you know, with Japanese machines, right? All Hondas, all the bolts and screws and stuff are 10 millimeter, except for the the wheels. They're 12 millimeter. So uh, an adjustable wrench would probably be good for that. Or a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter wrench. Just to take the wheel off of this. And this is it. That's all you need to do. Is put, secure that onto here. And hopefully we can fix that. You know what I mean? So here we have a better look at the corner here. This is the part. I'm just going to try to figure out if it's this side or that side. I'm looking at the other side. The other side doesn't really look like this. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like that. No, no, it's not like that. It's like this, because I didn't see this part in the back of that. Yep. You see that, guys? That's how it goes. Some stretching. You know what? Actually, JP Weld might work, because it actually... It's tight, you know what I mean? And the JP Weld will hold. You just got to stretch it. Look at that. I stretched it. Pop right in there. Huh. That's cool. You know what? I'm going to go mix some JB Weld. I think this might work. Got a piece of cardboard here. I, uh, um, scraper, you know, for spackle. And I've got a couple of squeezes of this JB Weld. The black one is a steel and the red one is the hardener. I used this tube last on my, um, well you guys know, my, um, my hot water heater, my hot water indirect storage tank. It worked for a few days and then it sprung a leak. This is the hardener. You put just about the same amount as the black stuff. Got a couple of drops left just in case I get into a pickle and I need one drop of the stuff, you know. So it's like a chemical reaction. If you guys haven't used JV Weld, I mean, it, it's pretty good. Just want to mix them both up, squeeze them together, smear it until it turns from white and black to kind of like a dark gray charcoal color. And it takes about uh, four to six hours to kind of harden, but a full 24 hours for it to cure, to cure completely, you know? So before this hardens anymore, I'm gonna take this part off. See, I don't wanna uh, do it so hard that it um, breaks some more, you know? This was a pretty clean break, therefore, Got good surface area. So I'm just gonna dab some of this stuff on each corner here. And it's okay if you put too much because it'll smear and then the sides will be more of a structural um, reinforcement, if you will. If you have leftover, I'd smear it around there some more, which I'm pretty sure I will have, because I'm almost done and I still have plenty left. See? 
mean, that's generous. It's okay, I want to be generous. They've actually tested this JB well. They used to have commercials on TV where a construction worker, JB welded his helmet to this like um, metal beam and he hung himself from it. Not, you know, not, not hung himself as in death, but you know, he was holding his hat. He put two handles on his helmet. Now, how did that go? Yeah. And he, um, basically what he was saying is that you could put all your weight on it. That's what he was trying to say. And the dude was like 250 pounds. There. That's on there, baby. Baby, that's on there. So, look. See how it's smeared out like that? Should I push it down? Or should I keep it that way? You know what I mean? Burn? I think I should smear it down a little. More like Bondo. You know what I mean? Burn. So I've got some more here. I'm just going to reinforce this area there. Here, let me get you there. This is the view from the top. Hey, view from the top. It was a movie. So I'm going to get that beam. That's a structural beam right there for engineering. If you have that beam there, that holds it into place. This is another beam. Very important to get some JB weld on there. In case you guys didn't know, not that you care, but uh, I was actually, uh, my first year of college, I was a mechanical engineering major, because I like to do shit like this, you know what I'm saying? And uh, most of you guys, I'm sure, could be very good engineers as well. But, uh, chemistry, physics, that stuff's tough. And I went to a party school, so I really didn't concentrate very well, if you know what I mean. I uh, like to have too much fun, not so much studying. Uh, anyway, so I changed my major, and I finished with a uh, degree in business administration management. And I guess that's why I'm pretty good at business, too. <laughs> See, so the engineering and the business, they all go together. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm saying. I say that a lot. But, I don't know, what do you guys think? This looks pretty good. I think this might work. I think it might. Might. Let me just put some in the back here. Actually, I could use more. I wish I didn't plop so much over here. I'm gonna scoop some up. And I want to put some on the back here. I don't know, fellas. I think this might fit. I mean, this might work. Because it's it's like once you just... I plopped it on there, right? It's pretty tight already, you know? And the JB Weld is just going to hold it there. A lot better. So I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Ooh, that this might work. I'm just going to use my freaking hands. All right.
That's pretty good. So, just going to let that cure for 24 hours. But in the meantime, I'm going to remove that rear wheel and check out the condition of the uh, gears. Of course it's not going to fit. It's not 12 millimeter. Should I go and try and find a metric socket? Nah, just do this. Huh. That gear looks fine. Let's see the back of this. Huh? It's uh, metal, so it has to be fine. There's grumbling and grumbling in there, so maybe it's the other side. Maybe it is the other side, but I doubt it though because it's metal on metal, you know? So it has something to do with the belt or the gears in the crankcase, which would not be good because I hate screwing with that. Transmission for that is crazy, crazy expensive. These Hondas are very expensive, crazy expensive. Like you'll pay seven or eight hundred dollars for their top of the line push walk behind mower. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna leave this the way it is right there because I want this to cure properly, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow when it hardens, cures, and I'll put that wheel back on and see if it stays put for a bit. And then we'll investigate the uh, why the rear propulsion doesn't really work well. So it's the morning time now. And as you could see, this is hardened very nicely. However, I'm not too happy about that and that. Also on the very bottom. See this part right there? I don't really like that. Some cracks there. And I'd like to get some in there. I just want to seal all the cracks, you know? Because every little bit counts for the structural integrity of how that sits. So I'm going to have to use that remaining little bit that I have left of JB Weld and get those cracks. Just want to make sure it's right, you know? In the meantime, this being on its side, Earl leaked out. So when I start this up again, it's going to smoke like Smokey and a Bandit. Another thing I noticed is I was looking at the rear wheels. And look, this actually has like a, another, like a tread belt over it, which is, I've never seen that before, except for those power wheels for the kids, you know, the plastic wheels, they have the rubber sleeves that they put around it, this has that, I guess it's for like, I think the guy put it in on himself, because look, there's like a nail in there, I don't know why he did it, I mean the tread doesn't look terrible, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So this is like an extra tread. Um, looking at the wire for the blade engagement, the PTO. It looks like I could actually push it in more, like another quarter inch or so. And that would stretch the wire a little bit more. That might have been a reason why it didn't fully engage 
I mean, it could be one of the problems of why the PTO, uh, why the propulsion doesn't work right. Maybe. We'll see when we get this all buttoned up. I'll fire it up again. Pull on that, pull on that wire to see if it engages better than we know that it is the wire that was just stretched and it needs to be tightened up. So I'm going to mix some more JB Weld and button that stuff up. This is my last uh, drop of JB Weld. I should just go buy some more some next time I'm at the store. This is uh, about seven bucks in New York. It's seven bucks. Actually, I could still save a drop here that I could squeeze out in case I really needed it for something. You know how you just need something sometimes at, at home. Oh, can you can you just weld that thing for a bit? Yes, I know. Just need a drop sometimes just to fix something. I'm using a screwdriver today because a big spatula won't get into little crevices. So I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and mix this up and use it to applicate onto the little cracks in those areas where it's difficult to get to with a spatula or that scraper thing. Now this is this is actually kind of a lot. I have more than what I need, I think. So I'm just going to use the excess and go over the parts again, almost like a double layer. point you guys to the areas. A nice thick coat. That's a nice thick coat. Now I'm going to get to the bottom. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. You guys aren't going to be able to see this because it's just uh, too dark in the crevice over there. It's not going to work. I'm just going to get a big blob and just scoop it in there.
that did it. Aha! Let me get that part now. So we're nearing the 4th of July, and uh, here in Suffolk County, Long Island, it's a little bit more further east in the island than it is Nassau County. Now it, it goes Queens, going east, Queens, which is New York City, technically. It's one of the five boroughs. Then there's Nassau County, which is a little bit more strict. And then there's Suffolk County, where I live where there's uh, way more people than cops. So because of that, it's pretty lax in terms of fireworks. In New York, we have a very strict fireworks law. Uh, growing up in New York City, when I was about 14 or so, there was no law against fireworks. You could shoot off fireworks anytime you want. Uh, not anytime you want, but it was much more lax than it is today. And so uh, when I was a kid, and we, my mom used to take me to Chinatown, my brother, and we used to go nuts with M80s, anything you wanted on the streets of Chinatown. And there'd be like uh, six inches of red paper on the, on the ground. I mean, it was just it's like a war zone, so much fun. And then Giuliani became mayor and he changed the law and he says fireworks are now not, uh, not allowed in New York. It's illegal, so. All the fun was gone. Um, but here in Suffolk County, even today, only on July 4th, cops don't really give you a tough time. Um, here in Suffolk County, when, when, when it's July 4th, right around when it starts getting dark, it's like Afghanistan over here. It's going off everywhere. And they just don't have enough cops to take care of it. You know what I'm saying? So the cops, if they, if we get a complaint, the cops will just roll by. And they'll come to the backyard and says, "Hey, you guys, uh, there's a complaint about the fireworks." And I says, "Oh, I'm sorry. You want hot dog?" And next thing you know, the two cops are standing there with hot dogs in their hands, watching the fireworks. Then when we're done, they leave and uh, they say, "Have a nice day." That's how it is over here, which is great. So I'm planning on having a decent show at a friend's house. Anyway, I think this is good. Sorry about my story about fireworks. Thought you'd be interested in uh, how it is over here in Long Island. It's pretty cool. I like it. So I've uh, solidified that area. And uh, since it's already been cured for 95% of it, it's solid on there. Just going to wait for the rest of it to cure. But in the meantime, I'm, it's strong enough for me to um, put the wheel on, I believe, I hope, um, I just want to make sure I get this on right, you know, so I want to look at the other side and see how this, shit, see how this goes on, it's 
it's got like a spacer there. And there goes the spacer. Just slides right up. Not as easy as it looks. How do you just put the damn wheel on? I'm trying, I'm trying, man. Okay, I'm going to find another uh, 12 millimeter wrench and hold it. I've got one 12 millimeter wrench over here. Just to hold it. Just spin it around. It was much easier putting, uh, taking the bolt off when the thing was loose, wasn't it? it's fixed. I think this will work. I'm going to put it right side up now. side's kind of towed out, and I'm afraid to bend that. See what I mean? This one here is really towed out. Keep doing this, I'll break this one. The only way to fix that is to take that wheel off and bang it with a hammer. The metal part, the metal frame thing. So when I was looking it over, look what I noticed. Didn't notice this before. It's a crack there. So you want to bend it back into shape so it fits back into the crack. It's tapped back into 
shape at least this area here. Now to find a way to kind of seal this, you know what I mean? Bang that and just pop it back out again. on that so I managed to shape this back into uh, what it used to be so it's not popping out you know but uh, how am I gonna seal this you know what I mean any ideas so I've got this soup container from a Chinese takeout place it's plastic flexible I'm going to cut the rim out. So I'm not going to put too much effort into this, but uh, I want to at least cover up the cracks. And uh, this is the GE silicone that I love to use. It's actually pretty strong. So I'm just going to cover up the cracks the best I can, and just so it pre prevents it from probably popping out of shape again. Probably will, you know. With the vigors of mowing, but what can you do? It's um, it is what it is. It's cracked, and if I tried to take this engine, put it on another deck, which I have, it's a Toro recycler personal paste deck, and unfortunately, that's not made for this type of engine and the clutch PTO system. It's just not made for it. It would take too much adapting. Don't think I haven't thought about it. And uh, it wouldn't work. At least I would spend hours on it trying to get it to work and it wouldn't work. So I'm just not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to try to repair this and sell it as is. It's still a pretty good Honda mower, you know. So the bends were not just were just not right, you know, so... going to kind of shape this uh, piece here to make it fit correctly and then I'll take some kind of a paint and paint over it or something so it doesn't look hideous but this is um, jigging yes I know but it's better than nothing Am I right? It's better than nothing. Better than having a crack there, the hole. At least I think so. Y'all can think what you want. You know, nobody's stopping you from making your own channel. I certainly am not stopping you. You know what? I forgot to put silicone on this part. Duh. I had to make that little uh, slice there because it just wouldn't bend right. So when you put the slice there, it'll bend right. You need the right amount of adhesive on here to get it to stick. You need to put something really heavy on this because you need to push it down for the silicone to cure. Silicone's a pain in the ass to get off your hands too. It's so sticky and stinky smells hmm. it's pretty cool and
And uh, the reason why I used this um, soup container top is because the plastic is thin, bendable, flexible, and very light in weight. So the amount of silicone you put on there, as long as you're covering a large surface area, right, it will hold, it'll stay down like it's doing right now. See, it's actually staying down. I know it looks like hell, but I'll try to find a way to cover it up. You know me, I can find a way to cover this up. I was thinking about getting a spare um, side discharge door. I remember I have plenty of them, but right now I can't seem to find any. I uh, parked all my snow blowers in my under my tent, and it's blocking my way to go to the area where I throw all, all kinds of crap, you know. And honestly, I went back there just now to try to find it, and it is so hot outside, right? That I almost fainted because I'm sweating my balls off. I almost fainted just looking for that damn thing, and I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm not gonna look for it. So see, I could take one of those, um, you know, side discharge doors, right? <laughs> just glue it on there so it doesn't, so it doesn't look like that, you know. But uh, I don't know, that looks okay, I guess, you know. But it's just black, you know. If I had the exactly the same paint color I could just paint over it it still would look like hell but if I could put a one of those black side discharge doors right over it it would block that and it would look better you know but then if I sell it to somebody somebody will say hey what's that door I said oh that's nothing it's just for looks <laughs> so while I'm waiting to figure out what I'm gonna do about that hole it's just too hot for me to work out here, so I'm going to go back inside for a bit, but I wanted to show you. This is the uh, Craftsman seat that I got from uh, Five Speed Ash uh, through a trade. And while the bottom of this seat does have two rows, right? Just like the bottom of my uh, Zero Turn 616Z seat, it's uh, off. So, seven and a half inches there and it's only five and a quarter inches here so it would mean that if I wanted to try to make it work right I would have to drill a hole right there so close to the the slit you know the hole would be right there so structurally it wouldn't be strong at all or there's one bolt in the middle two bolts here threaded right here in the center I could just drill two holes in there, right, and mount this seat on there. However, I like the armrests on the original one. And this is made with them on there, you know, and they, they bolted this on from the other side, and they, then they put the seat cushion on. Well, if I tried to drill two holes here and two holes there, I wouldn't be able to tighten that bolt unless I use self-tapping screws, which wouldn't be that strong because you're putting a lot of weight on your, your arms and stuff. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go buy a seat cover <laughs> and cover that up. That's probably the easiest way, and I'll keep the seat for another application in the future. I mean, it's a decent seat, but as you can see, it's not without its flaws, so it's not perfect anyway, and it says Craftsman on it. wanted to show you the big Lucas Oil sticker I put on my uh, garden tractor. Huge. So that's what I'll probably do. I'll just get a seat cover and cover that up. Um, poke two holes on the side for the armrest. So I finally went to the backyard and uh, found one of these covers. Found one that matches the sort of matches the color. Instead of black, it's like sort of gray. <laughs> I think it's off of uh, Scotts or something like that. 
I'll just uh, glue that on or something. It'll look better than the black hole. I also noticed on the uh, back of this mower that the um, foot protector flap is all chewed up. And uh, there's three screws there that you, three screws or four screws that you take off and replace it. I have this from another lawnmower that I had a few years ago. And I, I never throw away anything, so I have it in my box somewhere. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can, you know, wow, look at that. Fits perfectly. I just poke four new holes and put that back on. That'll look better. And also, so these wheels, right, they just look funky and funny. Well, you guys remember this damn thing, right? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that doesn't start well but look it's got two like brand new Honda rear wheels on there <laughs> I'm just gonna put those on here uh, actually they don't look exactly the same maybe they'll fit only one way to find out so that idea is not gonna work because this wheel the gear is bigger than this wheel so that's not gonna work and uh, also, if you look over here, there's nothing wrong with the gears. So it has to be the gearbox transmission or the cable that's, that's causing it not to uh, run right. Because there's nothing wrong with these, the gears on either, you know? So I put those wheels back. I'm going to take off these four bolts, or screws, the bolts. Okay. So now I'm going to match up the holes here. Not at the space shuttle. Not an exact science. Let's do it. We're getting a new driveway anyway. Make these holes bigger.
plate that have threads. Goes here. Just sits there. Hope this screw can down. Takes a little bit of wiggling to get it right, you know. than I thought. I guess it's lined up pretty well. Surprising. That one's not. I see it though. Maybe I'll just do this one. done it the other way, right? Do it that way. You know what, forget it. It's fine. As long as it prevents you from putting your foot under there. It'll droop down as time goes by and heat. Checked out all the contact points. And it's right along here. So I'll put a thin bead of silicone right along here. There's a contact point here, so I'll put a blob right there. Since you know where it touches, you can make a bigger blob so you make sure it touches. You know what? I'm going to put a blob right here. That's it. I'm not messing with this damn thing anymore. So I'll have to come back to this another time because um, everything is drying, especially the um, hole as well as the wheel in the front. And if I started the engine up, it would probably blow that cover right off. 
So I gotta wait for the silicone to cure before I can start the engine. And we won't be able to troubleshoot the uh, rear propulsion until I start the engine. Kind of figure it out, you know? So I'll come back to this. See you guys later. Yep, that's right. I'm finally letting go of my Craftsman LTV-10. Stripped it for as many parts as I could get without kicking my ass on the, the rusted parts that uh, would just not come off. But I pretty much stripped it pretty well. I don't even know why I stripped it because I don't even know if anybody would want those parts. The frame's actually pretty good. Anyway, I'm just going to put an ad up on Craigslist real quick and say, hey, you metal scrappers, come get it. I'm leaving you a cast iron sector gears. How about that? It's just uh, too much trouble to get it out. I mean, just way too rusted out on the bottom and it would kick my ass. So I'm just going to dump it just like that. So it's been a day. I guess all that stuff is dried now. Now we know we had a ton of oil in that muffler, so I'm going to just start it up and burn that stuff off. Alright. Alright. So I've got it on choke right now. had some gas in there. That thing's bone dry. I don't even know how it uh, looks so dry. I don't even know how it started in the first place. Put some gas in there. Let's see. It's funny. It's not smoking. tell this has been serviced before. Seven gables. I don't think the RPMs are very high. I'm going 
want to adjust the RPMs. So, I think that the gearbox gears are stripped underneath. I'm surprised that it didn't smoke at all because we had uh, oil coming out of the muffler. So, uh, I think I might just uh, flip it on its side again. And uh, it's not the cable because I pulled the cable by hand and it uh, still does the same thing. So, I, it just feels like uh, the gears are stripped inside the transmission. In which case, that's really bad. So I've got this thing propped up on the side and I've come to the conclusion that um, the gears that the axle turns the wheels are good. I've come to the conclusion that the where the drive belt goes to the cog that spins the cone shaped uh, gear that moves the two side ones that connection there is stripped because if you do this right I'm taking a pair of vice grips and turning the axle right and I'm turning it the wheels spin forward you see what I'm saying it's moving and I'm putting a lot of resistance on it and it's not stripping you follow what I'm saying so those gears are correct the one the vertical shaft that comes down with the cone um, thing that stripped to the two side ones that turn that turn the axle forward so um, hold on here I'm gonna show you the way Honda makes them is that you have no access to the opening of the gearboxes like the craftsman's do the craftsman's you could see the bolts here so you can just take it off and take this panel off and you can inspect the in, inner gears. This one you'd have to drop the entire transmission with these uh, snap rings, you know, and all these washers and spacers and all that. And it's a big, big job because I've taken apart a couple of these and it's just like, once you take it apart, you're like, God knows. How are you going to put it back together again? So we're talking about hours and hours of work. Disconnect the cable, um, getting in there, taking this wheel off, spacers, washers, snap rings, all that stuff, just to slip it out, just to open the gearbox and see that the gears are stripped. Um, I came to the conclusion that it's not the cable because uh, while it was running, I was, um, which one is it? Yeah, oh, this one here. This is the uh, drive cable. I was pulling it by hand and I felt no difference. So therefore, it wasn't the cable. 
being uh, loose or anything. It's not the gears in the wheel or the uh, assembly where it turns the gear on the wheels. It's in the gearbox. So, given the condition of this uh, mower, and granted, yes, we did fix what was wrong with it, which was the cracked deck, right? It's actually kind of holding up pretty well. Um, I did take off the right one just so that I could see if I could bend it back because it toes out on the front sides. And what I noticed was it was the beginning of cracking on that area too, same as this one. So that one's about to go and I wasn't about to, you know, push it and stuff like that. And of course we have the crack on the right hand side too. But uh, honestly, the engine does run well. Uh, the self-propulsion doesn't work. Works very little, you know. We're talking like 5% or 10% it works. You know, it still spins the wheels. Um, and it, I haven't tried mowing it with it yet, but uh, if you, as you guys saw, when you engage the PTO, it struggles to engage the PTO because I think um, the clutch needs to be greased and uh, it, it's, it's, you know, catching, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not smooth. So, uh, honestly, um, I don't want to fix the transmission or any of that stuff because it's just too much work and not enough profit, you know? So I might sell this as is for like a hundred bucks, which is a really good deal for that engine, you know? But it's got its issues. Uh, it, it needs a new deck honestly you know it needs a new deck for sure needs a new transmission so basically the only thing this is good for is parts engine bagger levers cables maybe uh the wheels are pretty much shot you know the deck is shot so uh, it's really not worth um going through hours and hours of trying to recuperate and refurbish this into a perfectly working machine because it's not going to happen because the deck is so is such in bad shape that um, there's no way you can get it to be perfect you know so that'll be it for today um, I guess we can call it a fail in terms of refurbishing to, to perfect condition but uh, I would call it a success that the JB weld for that cracked corner for the wheel actually does work but uh, so I, I've spent a lot of time on this and uh, I'm just going to sell it uh, as is for maybe a hundred bucks. I'd be lucky if I get a hundred bucks. It is a good engine though. But uh, anyway, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com.